Here's something unusual. Some kind of browning happening on the Thuya Green Giants. So it's the first time I've seen that. Possibly a tip blight of some kind because tip blight has been affecting other trees now and it's only on the branches that are back here closest to the other trees so that would be the least amount of airflow which would mean it stays moist longer and that would be conducive to fungal growth. So I'm going to trim out the affected branches. Luckily it's pretty easy to identify them. You can see these are golden and it should be green. So um, I'm going to trim that out and see what happens. It's only on the one and I'm hoping if I trim it soon that it won't be a problem. Now let's go look at some other updates on fungus in the conifer collection. This is a deodar cedar and I mentioned last fall that I probably would have to get rid of this tree because I'm fairly certain that it's affected by an armillaria root rot fungus or mushroom. But it's put on a lot of new growth so far this year and the new growth is slightly more green than this older growth which was pretty yellow. So I think I'm going to leave this here for now and see if it can essentially stage a comeback and recover just because it has put on so much new growth. So that's an encouraging sign for a deodar cedar. Here's a row of cryptomerias and since we last looked at them they've been really affected by the Fomopsis tip blight a lot more. You can see the inner branches from last year have all pretty much started to turn brown and the only thing that's really green left on it is this flush of new growth for the spring. Everything else is turning kind of an brown or a very off olive color all the way up. It looks pretty ugly. And it kind of makes me regret that I have so much cryptomeria planted. At least the Yoshino variety. That's what this is. So here's another one. Not quite as bad. This just uh, reminds me again that Cryptomeria is a problematic species for Tennessee. At least if it gets sprinkled on, which these do. Here's some browning inside a Murray cypress, which I mentioned in a previous video. This species is supposed to be pretty resistant to all types of infection. And I can't tell if this is due to shading or some other kind of stress, but it's very localized in this one. I'm just going to wait and see what happens before I go making any major adjustments there. But that's uh, Murray Cypress turning brown as well. You can see here's some down here where basically entire twigs die out. And I don't see any evidence of bleeding cankers on the branch. Which suggests, once again, tip light could be the cause. And now look at a blue atlas cedar. There's a lot of needles. There's one but there's a lot that are turning kind of a purplish color. Then again, on the whole, the tree looks pretty good. So I think that just could be some kind of stress, possibly from humidity. And it's not all the needles and it's not an entire branch that's turning. So maybe a little bit of needle rust here and there. I'm still pretty positive on blue atlas cedar. I just wanted to show you that it's not entirely happy with the climate here. This is the aftermath of pruning off most of the lower branches on a Norway spruce. I'll step back so you can see the whole tree now. This was in response to something I showed in an earlier video about Rhizosphera needle cast. I trimmed off most of the lower branches on that one and this one right next to it and we'll see if that slows down the needle cast enough for the high growth rate of the Norway spruce to outpace it. I think this could work because I have another Norway spruce that I'm pretty sure may have had some needle cast at some point, and now it doesn't. So I think, you know, Norway, like I said in another video, is the most resistant. Maybe it can come back from that. I'll show the other spruce now. Here's that other Norway spruce that at some point in the past I thought might have had rhizosphere needle cast, and now all of the needles on that inside area have dropped away. But since then, the rest of the tree has put on a lot of growth, especially up top. And uh, as far as I can tell now, it's not really showing any signs of infection. So maybe the pruning on the other trees will be sufficient 
to keep the Norway spruce alive, let it recover, bring in more airflow to dry out those lower branches, and that'll be all that's needed. And here's the Wichita blue juniper, where I trimmed off most of the main trunk to try to hold off the Fomopsis tip light. But I don't know if you can tell this or not, this branch here, compare the shading to this branch and the one behind it. See how this is more gray, slightly more ashen? That's what the Fomopsis looks like before it turns brown. At first it goes off color. So that just tells me that this next branch here has also been affected. This one as well. This one as well even. Starting to go off color. Which is the next branch down from where I trimmed before. So that just kind of goes to show you how the Fomopsis is pretty systemic when it gets into these junipers. And I mentioned in another video that I will be cutting this out in the fall, but if it keeps up at this rate, there may not be much left to cut down. The whole tree may be gone by then. I will be taking off these branches as they go off color to prevent the spread of spores. And uh, interestingly, Arizona cypress right next to that, no problems with Fomopsis. So good news is Arizona cypress seems to be mainly resistant to that. Now here's a one little tip there. Let's look at that. That's classic tip light right on the tip turning brown but I can just pinch this off and it'll be good to go. It doesn't really take out entire branches on the Arizona cypress like it does on the juniper. And this would be for any Rocky Mountain juniper species you want to avoid it in Tennessee. That could be the moon glow variety and of course the Wichita blue which is right here in front of you. And also, you should avoid a lot of the Chinese juniper varieties. You may see Blue Point juniper. And you may see Spartan juniper. Those are also going to be negatively affected by Fumopsis tip blight in Middle Tennessee. The only juniper, in my opinion, that's reliable would be Juniperus virginiana, which is the eastern red cedar. I've talked about at other times. That one is not going to be susceptible to this. Luckily, there are many cultivars, even a blue cultivar similar to this, like Skyrocket. So um, you have your choices with Juniperus virginiana, but definitely avoid Juniperus scopulorum. We have here Juniperus chinensis, the Chinese juniper varieties. Probably any other juniper that's not native to here should be avoided. This was a blue cultivar of Spanish fir, Picea abies, sorry, Picea not Picea, Abies Pinsapo, and Glauca variety. Couldn't think of that name there. Every single needle turned brown and fell off, and it had pretty good sun, had plenty of water. So I don't know if it was just tip light that got it pretty bad because it's right next to another Wichita Blue, which has had tip light problems, and it's right next to Cryptomeria, which obviously still has tip light problems. So uh, Spanish fur. Probably not the greatest to plant in Tennessee. I have another one that's further back in the yard that's doing fine, but I wouldn't waste an effort on a Spanish fir.